Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review, a comic book podcast at longboxreview.com. Welcome to the show. Today I'm going to look at yet another of DC's New Age of Heroes books. Uh, This time I'm going to talk about uh, Terrifics number one. Terrifics is by Ivan Race, Jeff Lemire, Joe Prado, Marcelo Maiolo, and Tom Napolitano. Doing all the uh, the good stuff here in this in this book. So this is uh, this is one of the the New Age of Heroes books. Uh, it was probably one of the ones I was most excited about when these books were announced. Um, not so much for the characters involved, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, just just the idea of uh, or the apparent idea that DC is doing their version of the Fantastic Four. And uh, which is really interesting uh, that I'm talking about this right now because because, uh, as I'm recording this on March 30th, uh, 2018, uh, yesterday Marvel announced the return of the Fantastic Four in a new comic book. So (laughs) just one of those weird serendipitous things. But uh, anyway... um, uh, DC beat them to the punch, so to speak, and uh, brought back uh, DC's version of the Fantastic Four, at least on the surface. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more. But um, So, like I said, I was looking forward to this, uh, this book in particular to see what DC would do uh, in the Fantastic Four vein. And um, so we'll, we'll start with that. Or we'll start from that point, I guess I should say. And uh, let's see here. Um, so just as a as a quick a quick um, uh, overview of the the plot of the book, you know what's going on. Basically, uh, Mister Terrific, who is one of the four here, shows up at Simon Stagg's um, seaside. Uh, laboratory i guess and uh uh to prevent uh, stag from delving into or or accessing the dark multiverse he so uh stag is uh opened up a portal that goes to uh the the dark multiverse uh which which the uh, you know that particular storyline just and i just read uh dark multiverse metal or, or sorry dark knight's metal Number six, just uh, a couple days ago, uh, as I record this, and so that that's kind of fresh in my mind, so to speak, because <laughs> it took a long time for for the whole six issues to come out. But uh, you know, whatever. And um, so anyway, uh, uh, Mister Terrific shows up to prevent Stag from doing this. He uh, encounters Metamorpho, who's trapped in, in like at the the entry of the portal. And uh, they end up going through the portal, um, uh, dragging along Plastic Man, whom Mister Terrific had had drug along with him, or, or uh, had him uh, or teleported him in. So the three of them are in the dark multiverse. They land on uh, this uh, creature. I'll just say right now, and um, and encounter the fourth member of the team, which is, I believe, going to be known as the new Phantom Girl, at least in this in this century. And then they, uh, there was a distress signal that, uh, well, that drew the the three that came into the dark multiverse drew, uh, drew them to the, uh, the, the creature, uh, on which they landed. And we get a surprise guest star on the very last page. And I'll talk about that later. That's basically the book. There's not a lot going on in this. Um, which kind of surprised me. I kind of expected a little bit more going on with this this first book, a little bit more to like really wow me and capture me and grab me and say, "Hey, you got to read this book from now on." And I didn't really get that. Uh, so not not a great um, start out of the gate, uh, which is unfortunate. But um, wonderful art by uh, Ivan Race and Joe Prado. And uh, Marcelo Maiolo, um, I it, you know I always love Ivan Race's stuff, uh, so I was I was uh, uh, looking forward to seeing what he could do on this book. And since these uh, New Age of Heroes books are seem to be more artist driven, much like the <laughs> the Silver Age of Marvel comics, you know I kind of wanted to see what uh, what uh, 
Ivan could do here. And like I said, it looks nice. It's a nice looking book. Uh, I can't help but think that maybe another artist would have done, I don't know, um, something better perhaps with this particular story, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. But okay, so that's that's the overview of it. I wanted to um, uh, just talk about the cover as I have been for these New Age of Heroes books. And so, you know, we get we get the the four characters on here. Uh, I, I had to wonder, and I, and I looked, but I didn't find anything. I also didn't look very hard. Uh, and I wondered if this is some sort of homage to some Fantastic Four cover. Uh, so if you know, that'd be, I'd like, I'd like to hear about that, but you got the, the four characters, Mr. Terrific front and center there, uh, going, um, clockwise. We've got Phantom Girl, uh, Linya Wazo, uh, Plastic Man there doing, giving us the, the peace sign with his stretched out fingers and his iconic stretchy, stretchiness. <laughs> and we have, um, the thing or, uh, the things analog, uh, metamorpho here, on the right. And we've got uh Mr. Uh Terrific's T spheres kind of floating around there. And I and just had to I had to I had to laugh to myself because I wondered, so are the T spheres kind of like the Herbie of this of this group? <laughs> if you know uh Herbie from the Fantastic Four I th- was it the cartoon that originated Herbie? I think so. I seem to re- remember that. Maybe I think maybe Herbie appeared later in the comics. I might be wrong about this, but anyway. Um, so that's it. And they're just kind of, they're on this uh, outcropping of rock, it looks like, and all this energy crackling, kind of like Kirby Crackle stuff in the background. And that's about it. You know, not, it's a nice composition. It looks okay. Uh, but, you know, not, not, a ho- not a lot going on there. Just a bunch of characters standing there in heroic poses waiting to do something, I guess. Um, although Mr. or uh, Plastic Man is kind of saying hi to us. Uh, and then they have the fold-out stuff. If you fold the fold the cover out to the uh, the the, the uh, stretched out vertically cover, and that's a horrible sentence, but anyway, um, you've got you've got the continuation of the cover, and on the top panel, the top third, you've got Simon Stagg in the background with uh, Java, his manservant, right in front of him, and then this alien hooded this hooded alien creature. Um, reaching down towards our heroes. Uh, so that didn't appear in this first issue. So I'm curious where, what that is going to be and where, what the, what's going to happen there. And then, uh, at the bottom is, uh, another group of characters. And I don't want to say who they are at the moment. Um, oh, what the hell? I'll just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you haven't read this, right? Cause, uh, or maybe you haven't, I don't know. But, uh, since I'm, I'm, as I, as I read these books, it's, I think Terrific's number two will be out soon. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of behind in talking about them in terms of releasing these episodes in relation to the publication of the book. So I, I, I sincerely doubt this is a spoiler, but, but in case you haven't read it, be warned, I'm about to spoil something. Uh, the, the strong family, the Tom strong family is the group on the bottom panel here with, uh, I believe that's, um, Tom strong's wife and daughter. And then, cause, and honestly, you know, I, I don't, I I've only read one volume, one collected, uh, volume of Tom strong comics. And so, and it was so long ago, I don't really remember anything about it. Uh, so I don't know who this gorilla character is. There's this, uh, uh, old, uh, funky, lo- funky looking, uh, robot with the, with a bowler hat. I think it's a bowler hat. See, I don't, I don't know my hats all that well. Um, uh, uh, in, in the background. So, you know, uh, and Tom Strong is the guy that shows up at the very end of, of this, of this first issue. So, um, so, so that's really promising. Um, you know, I, I, from what I remember, I liked the Tom Strong book that I read, uh, it's something, it's a character and it's a series that I, I have always wanted to read more of, and I just haven't, haven't, uh, made the decision to go buy more, um, uh, trades of the Tom Strong stuff. So maybe this will be an incentive to do so, but regardless, I am, I'm very interested and maybe perhaps a little, a little excited, 
uh, to to read about the, the the strong characters in in this book, and so that that sets up an interesting dynamic. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but whatever. Um, uh, potentially, potentially an an interesting dynamic where you've got two sets of families who are explorers and who um, have these interesting adventures and personalities uh, coming up against each other or or working together. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm I'm really kind of excited about the possibilities here. And then on the on the on the flip side is there's a portion of the the new challengers um, cover or or some image from from that book, or or they they play some role in in uh, this book because I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't seem to connect to to the uh, the other side, but anyway. Okay, so. Uh, there's that. Um, uh, one more thing about the the cover. Uh, I, I do like the, well, it's sort of a, a white motif. So Mr. Terrific, is, his costume is, there's a lot of white in it. Phantom Girl, of course, has a lot of white. Uh, it reminds me, uh, metamorph- Metamorphos, you know, his head and neck has always been white. So you got that going on. Um, and it reminds me a lot of making parallels to the Fantastic Four again, uh, the future foundation era of the, of the FF, cause they had those all white and black costumes. And so I think on issue number two's cover that I just looked at the other day, uh, Plastic Man is also wearing a, a black and white or similar version of his costume. So they're really going for that, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, Phantom Girl also her skin tone is very pale. She looks her skin tone looks white, in fact, um, which is different from how it is in the the interior of the book. But uh, you know, just going, you know, she, there's 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 a uh, there's a reference later in the book about how you know is she a ghost or whatever, and so I thought that was kind of interesting that that connection and the way she looks on the cover. So uh, the the opening pages is uh, this this uh, monologue by Mister Terrific, uh, overlain with the images shown, which is Java standing outside of Stag's laboratory here, apparently waiting for Mister Terrific to show up, and uh, uh, Terrific talks about himself, about how he is. He's 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 not one of the people who just kind of goes about their lives without fully understanding the world around them. They're not interested in, in the mysteries of of the universe, but he's one of those, and he demands to know answers, and he seeks out these mysteries and solves them. And uh, he says, "It says here, I wrangle the unknowable and pin the impossible down." And I guess that's why they call me Mister Terrific. Guy has an ego. <laughs> as well but what's really interesting here is java just standing there like i said just standing there waiting for mr terrific and as as terrific's talking about himself um this moth flies near uh java's head and, or near near java and java grabs it and stuffs it in his mouth it's very um animalistic in the way that uh, java is being portrayed here and I know Java was, he's like one of those, uh, if, if I remember my metamorpho, metamorpho history correctly, Java is kind of like Captain America in the sense that he was found in in some ice, Stag rescued him. So he's kind of like a, um, a prehistoric guy, um, kind of like Narc from the Teen Titans, now that I think about it. Uh, I might be wrong about all this, but uh, this, this is what I recall. Anyway, I just I just thought it was interesting the this moth, you know the the whole moth to a flame thing and um, the part about uh, uh, terrific hearing that distress call and going towards it, you know does that mean that that uh, th- this group is is the moth in this story? I'm trying to figure out the analog or the the analogy here. Um, but it but it you know it comes across a little menacing. If not, if not Java, then then some greater force here, and this is just this is just the uh, the like I said the analogy for that, but uh, interesting choice um, to, uh, for that. Uh, I don't know that it means anything really, but you know there you go. And then we get uh, uh, there's a couple references, uh, one by Java, and then on the very next page, Simon Stagg makes a comment about 
uh, uh, Michael Holt, who is Mr. Terrific, how Holt has been off world. He's been in these other dimensions. So, uh, we, we know we, we actually, we get a lot of pages here, uh, at the very beginning, basically talking about stuff, talking about the dark multiverse, what Michael's been up to, um, why stag is doing what he's doing sort of, so to speak, uh, how he's doing it is probably more appropriate because stag basically bought out Holt's business while Holt was away on his adventures. Um, but Holt is, uh, Mr. Terrific is much more interested in stopping stag from opening up this portal. Um, let's see here. Oh, the other thing about the, the moth to a flame, I forgot. Um, I have in my notes, um, that I'm looking at here. Uh, so I thought maybe there was some sort of parallel about the a moth being drawn to the flame, like Mr. Terrific, uh, seeks out the impossible. So that's probably what's going on there. Um, so then we get, uh, uh, the introduction of Metamorpho in the story on the, on the first splash page of, of the comic. And I have to say, I'm not all that impressed with this splash page. You know, a splash page should be like, you know, wow, here's this great image introducing some character or some idea or, or, or some, you know, just something, something big about the moment. Right. And it's really kind of pulled back. It's mostly about the colors and showing the portal than anything else. Uh, you have the 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 four characters: Stag, uh, Java, Terrific, and Sapphire, Stag's daughter, Metamorpho's girlfriend, and uh, I or I should say, Metamorph the Metamorpho Metamorpho is Sapphire's boyfriend. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, Metamorpho is in like uh, shackled in this machinery, holding him right at the the opening of this portal. And so, you know, we get it metamorpho there. Um, okay. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, terrific calls, uh, teleports in, uh, 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 plastic man in his egg form that we've seen in dark Knight's metal. Then basically, uh, metamorpho breaks out of the shackles, attacks Mr. Terrific. And then the two of them, along with Plastic Man, get sucked into the portal. And that's that's pretty much the first, I don't know, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages <laughs> of the story. Um, yeah, not, not a whole lot of, of actual plot here. Um, but at least now we're getting into some good stuff. Uh, I, before I move on to the next part of the story, I just want to say, God, I hate Stag. I've never liked that character. Um, but I guess that is a testament to, you know, he's he's such a bad dude. He's he's a bad, uh, bad businessman. He um, he threatens uh, Java. He's uh, basically by saying I should never should never have rescued you from the ice. He tells his daughter basically to shut up. You know, he's just, he's just insulting and he's, you know, he's, he's that, he's that, he's that, uh, character, that villain of the story, the an antagonist that you hope gets taken down, uh, by the hero, but never quite does, you know, his stuff may, his machinations may be foiled, but he never gets, you know, his due. And maybe that's why I just, I don't really despise the guy, <laughs> but, uh, um, anyway, and then, you know, the way that he talks to his daughter here, and I've seen this in other metamorpho stories where, well, I take that back. I've seen Stag be very deferential to his daughter and sweet in his own way, um, and then just turn around and eviscerate other people like metamorpho. Uh, but here he's he's very much um, just belligerent toward, towards his own daughter. And, and what's worse is that she just takes it she doesn't she doesn't stand up for herself she doesn't doesn't say something back and to be fair granted she is more concerned about metamorpho and what what rex is going through as he's suspended in front of that portal um i don't know i just i, I just i just don't really care for the stags i guess <laughs> so like I said, there's a lot of talk about the dark multiverse. It's front and center with this book. You know, the majority of the, the story is takes place in it. Uh, and that's, that's where we're at in, in, in the, in the, in the story here. 
And up to this point, so as they're getting sucked through the portal, uh, the first nine pages or so, uh, the colorist went with a really green, green and yellow theme for all the backgrounds and that crackling energy of the portal and whatnot. And then uh, basically, as soon as we get into the the multiverse, things go a little darker uh, in the backgrounds, and we get. Um, Except for there's a, there's there's a there's a, a two page splash showing that portal in the background that greenish portal but then there's there's a lot of a lot of pinks and and reddish and green tones here for a darker look, um, uh, so I just thought that was an interesting choice color wise. Uh, we get move into even some purples here towards the very end of the book, so I thought that was really inter- an interesting color choice, interesting transitions. I'm not sure what that means uh, of anything. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I react a lot to the colors. And so just wanted to mention that anyway. So like I said, the three of them are sucked through the portal and then plastic man comes alive. He, he wakes up and, uh, <laughs> Mr. Terrific kind of takes a commanding tone and yells at plastic man to basically encase them, to protect them from the, mul- the, 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 uh, corrosive energies of the dark multiverse. And there's this this cool image of Plastic Man expanding his uh, egg shaped body into more of a um, uh, a pocket. And he shoves the the two Metamorpho Mister Terrific in his mouth. There's a later panel where he spits them out in kind of an egg egg sort of shape, balloon shape, I guess more more like a hot air balloon looking shape. I did, and I really dug that. Plastic Man is not a character that I really liked at all, kind of like Metamorpho. Uh, I prefer, I know, I know a lot of people disagree with this, but I prefer elongated man. If you need a stretchy guy or, you know, obviously Mr. Fantastic from Marvel, but, uh, plastic man being the, I don't know, the, the stretchy guy, but that he can turn himself into all sorts of different looking things. I don't know. That's just never really appealed to me. His humor never really appealed to me. His goofiness especially never appealed to me. But I have to say, I really grew to like the character during the uh, um, Grant Morrison JLA run, especially his uh, interactions with and around Batman. And there is a uh, a uh, some talk about Batman in general, uh, specifically with Plastic Man, though, where... Um, after he wakes up and he's he's like what you know basically what's happened where am i what's going on and and there's basically these two pages of of uh mr terrific explaining everything and uh uh plastic man says geez i remember being in the bat cave with old pointy ears and the next panel plastic man changes his shape to ha- you know the, the top of his head point uh, uh creates these bat ears and then there's a shadow behind him that looks very very much like a batman shadow which i i thought that was kind of neat that the artists did. So, um, as I said, uh, terrific is, is explaining why Batman was, um, recruiting plastic man and then why terrific brought plastic man to stag's laboratory. And at, at one point plastic man says, Hmm, I feel used. And, and, and the, the look on his face, he's very, he's very irritated with this. And I know I, at least there's that dimension to the character. He's not just this jokey guy, uh, at least in this comic. I, I, like I said, I know in previous comics, he, he was given a lot more depth, which I, which I, that's the character I liked. So I'm glad to see that, that there's a little bit more to him than just uh jokey, um, loony plastic man. So. In the meantime, Metamorpho has just been kind of standing there. You know, he, at the very first, when, when, uh, the, uh, Plastic Man throws him inside himself, which is kind of weird to think about, but anyway, uh, uh, he basically apologizes to Mr. Terrific for attacking him. And that's about it. And then we get basically two pages of, of talkie talkie. And then at one point, um, it's like Metamorpho suddenly wakes up himself and says, wait, I, I didn't hurt Sapphire, did I? And, you know, Terrific tells, tells him he, uh, she's fine. It was just like this weird, why did it take him two pages of all this discussion between Plastic Man and Mr. Terrific to then interject? interject? I just thought that was a weird pacing thing, weird characterization thing. 
and then but then on the next page uh there is the the start of uh the the old thing versus johnny storm antagonism between the two characters because uh metamorpho kind of takes a not a doesn't take a liking to plastic man and calls him out on his shenanigans and it happens again uh later as well so so the, the you know the obvious parallels there between this these characters this book and fantastic four so we'll see how that goes i'm not not entirely it's you know with the thing and johnny it was kind of endearing between the two because you knew that they that they actually did love each other as 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 brothers and uh you know we don't have that between these characters yet so it's just it's just two two characters that are annoying each other and reacting to each other so we'll see how that goes um really interested in seeing how this these characters this team gels together because at least with the fantastic four you know they the you know the they had a brother and sister two longtime friends a romantic uh, relationship or at least one that's that was starting out um and eventually of course reed and sue got married so you know they had they had the family aspect so to speak um in 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 uh, one case literally and in, in another case uh, figuratively but but the the whole idea of, the, of them being a family was already there at the get-go whereas these characters don't have that So after after much talking, they land on this. What are they? What is terrific calls? Uh, he calls it a landmass, and then uh, <laughs> Metamorpho does his best. Um, this that ain't a moon moment by saying, "I don't think this is a planetoid," and we get the two page splash that I mentioned earlier, and Plastic Man. Uh, stretches way out there uh so we're kind of, kind of seeing uh this this exoplanetoid from his perspective and it's and it's not a landmass it is the dead carcass um i guess that's redundant to say it's a this carcass of this giant godlike looking creature you know kind of think think uh celestials of uh from the marvel universe so it's just so they're actually standing in the uh in inside the rib cage area the the abdomen uh, abdominal area of this of this creature and this is where i where you know the fantastic four is really evoked you know and just really kind of reminds me of this like i said the celestials or or uh galactus you know not not that galactus was dead like this but you know just just the idea of these these big expansive um uh, celestial creatures but this one's floating here floating out here in the dark multiverse dead so i i really like that it, it's this is what i was kind of hoping to see visually speaking uh in this book given that it is D- dc's ff uh, like I said uh, at the top of the show, though, uh, or near the top of the show, um, what pulled T- Mister Terrific to that area was this this distress signal that he was he his T spheres had had um, um, encountered, and so they go down to investigate and they they see this creature. Well, as soon as they basically as soon as they land, they get attacked by these spider like looking things, um, although they're only drawn with six legs they're not really spider-like but they they get kind of referred to as spider-like creatures um you know the obligatory alien creature attacking thing um uh and then that's interrupted by the appearance of uh linya wazo the the new phantom girl and she's very surprised to see these gentlemen here asking them are you guys really here and uh and you know michael responds yes in the affirmative and she and she she lowers her head in uh, onto her hand and says oh thank the gods and you know she she tells him it's been a long time i don't know how long they that she's been here uh time is funny in this place oh this is this is the reference to her being a ghost and it's it's a nice nicely done here in the art too so metamorpho metamorpho asks her uh, are you a ghost or something and she says basically no i'm i'm in my intangible form everyone on my planet can do it no big deal but what we're seeing here is her kind of floating there in front of them and you can see through her 
So I like how they're doing the intangible thing. In the in in uh, in Legion comics, Phantom Girl's intangibility has been shown a few different ways. One of which was um, her the coloring was was kind of washed over, like she was a ghost, and she she kind of had this uh, outliney aspect to her, like she wasn't really there. Uh, in later versions, I think artists got tired of trying to do that that um, that visual, and so just drew her going through things. Like she was, it looked like she was solid, but she could actually just go right through things. And and so they're kind of doing both here because she doesn't always appear translucent. She does she does appear solid at times, but in some shots they're showing her. Uh, as if you can see through her like a ghost. So I thought that was kind of cool that they're playing around with that. That's okay. Anyway, she, like I said, she, she tells them her name. It's Linya Wazo. And if you know Phantom Girl from the Legion, it's Tinya Wazo. So, you know, obviously she's from, she's, uh, um, uh, Tinya is a descendant of, I'm assuming anyway. I mean, she, <laughs> she basically looks like Tinya here. Uh, maybe a little different, but uh, very much the look of Phantom Girl from the the 31st century Legion character. Uh, but she's she's a Wazo, and she's from Bidges Bidgesadol. Bidges Bidges. It always sounds better when I say it in my brain than when I actually say the name of uh, Phantom Girl's planet. And uh, it's interesting too. Um, you know, how do you say Legion names and homeworlds and stuff? Because uh, there was a conversation I had on Twitter with a few people, and I, I apologize. Um, I can't remember who that was with now, but we were discussing how we pronounced uh, uh, Phantom Girl's planet's name, and and um, uh, I said I I pronounce it Bij Zatol. Bij Bij Zatol. <laughs> I just never mind. I'll stop doing that. But um, anyway, I I always like the name of Phantom Girl's planet more so probably than this than just about any other one. Just because it's it's so weird. B G Z T L. So um basically uh then then they discuss the distress signal and she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But then they find this this uh device just sitting there and 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 Phantom Girl's like, oh that old thing. It doesn't do anything. And uh, Michael gets, goes over to it and, of course, immediately gets it going. And uh, we get the final page, the, the 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 last splash page. And here's Tom Strong, a a, um, a, a holographic Tom Strong del- uh, delivering a message and saying, if you're seeing this, it means I'm probably dead. That means it is up to you to save the universe. And, uh, okay, and for some reason, this is just my weird brain, I immediately think of McGruff the crime dog imploring us to uh, take a bite out of crime. <laughs> I don't know why. Just forget I said that. But uh, anyway, uh, so <laughs> like I said, um, I assume that we'll get a team up uh, between the Terrifics and the Tom Strong family, which I, I'm really looking forward to. I don't know what this is about yet. Um uh, besides, of course, saving the universe, but it's like I have no indication here of what's going on. Uh, is the threat from the dark multiverse? Is the threat somehow just related to the dark multiverse? Uh, what What's the deal here? Um, how, how are these characters going to get together, and how are they going to interact? And there's just just a lot of unknowns here. And in, in some sometimes that's okay uh, as a storytelling technique because it, it piques your interest. Um, I guess my interest is peaked, but it's more about the characters involved than anything I've been given within the story. So I'm a little, little concerned about that. Um, of course, it's just the first issue. Uh, while I was disappointed with it, um, maybe you weren't. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear, uh, what your thoughts about this first issue and, and how it impacted you. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, uh, like I said, this is this is uh, this is supposed to be the uh, Fantastic Four in the DC universe. So, you know, are is it was it is it as good as the FF? No, of course not. I mean, this is this is not the FF, but it's it's an interesting has interesting parallels. Um, 
Uh, the connections are superficial at best right now. But I really like the idea of superpowered explorers this, um, and, and you know, going off and, and encountering awesome things. And uh, that's the kind of comic I'm really wanting right now, which is why I was very excited about this particular book. So will it, will it uh, conform to my expectations? I don't know yet. Uh, we're off to um, a potentially a rocky start just from the first issue, but I see potential there. And uh, that's what I will hold on to and, and hopefully get. I, given that this is, this is um, an, uh, an homage of sorts to the Fantastic Four, uh, some other stray thoughts I had when I, was, when I was taking my notes for this book, you know, um, you know, why, why, why is DC emulating Marvel with these, these new age of heroes books? Uh, why do the Hulk, Spider-Man, Punisher, um, Fantastic Four, why are they doing this? Uh, are they, are they just, you know, poking fun at Marvel is, are they truly doing an homage that, you know, uh, a, 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 um, a, a good natured homage, um, is it, is it, uh, more of, or somehow connected to, uh, DC's indulgence their their pro civil pro silver age indulgence, you know, about 10 years ago, they started bringing, or yeah, 10, about 10 ish or so years ago, they started bringing back all the silver age characters instead of having continuing with the legacy characters. I mean, they, they, they did continue with some, I'm thinking of Kyle from the Green Lantern core. Um, but you know, they brought back Hal, they brought back Barry, uh, they rebooted the universe um, and basically have ignored the golden age characters. You know, just the, for some reason, the silver age seems to be king at, at DC over the last 10 or so years. Um, so are, is DC admitting that the house of ideas did it better during the silver age? And so this is somehow some kind of result or I don't know. I, you know, I, in many ways, a lot of people, and I would even agree with this, you know, Marvel did do it better in the silver age to a large degree. Um, they'd certainly had a, a better, no, not a better. They certainly had an impact where DC was is usually considered to be kind of, uh, your dad's comics kind of a thing. You know, they, they, DC didn't really push the envelope and Marvel did. And so, you know, Marvel got a lot of accolades for that. Deser- deservedly so. But I just find it really weird that that um, that that uh, DC is doing this. Uh, maybe it's just that uh, Marvel's core ideas, like like the FF, just have a lot of resonance with these creators. Maybe that's it. It's like, dude, I, I'm not. I can't work on Fantastic Four, but I can do DC's version of Fantastic Four, um, which is still a weird concept to me. But okay, I, I can go with that. <laughs> Um, anyway, like I said, uh, uh, this being DC's Fantastic Four, and boy, I, I can, I'm can i looking forward to not having to say that phrase uh, any longer very shortly, um, is what drew me to the comic. Um, like I said, I don't really care for three of these, three of the main characters. I don't know yet about Phantom Girl, just because she's so new. I, we don't really know her personality yet. So we'll see. So, so she, you know, she's, she's a bit of a draw for me, but because she's an unknown, a bit of a mystery. So a, a little mystery among this larger mystery. So, you know, I kind of like that aspect of the comic. Uh, but I'd really, really love to see this be some sort of crazy cosmic DC book, um, akin to the recent Al Ewing and Kenneth Rocafort, the Ultimates book at Marvel, and which made me think of, is Ivan race really the best artist for this? You know, I, I praised Rocafort's art on, uh, sideways because we got, we got these kind of cosmic level characters and we have a dead one here in this book. And so if they're really trying to do FF Kirby, why not have Rocafort be, the artist on this now maybe it doesn't quite fit with the the characters the look of the characters i don't know i don't really think that that it really matters but um i think rocafort is is more of a cosmic level artist <laughs> uh than perhaps race but you know that's not a knock on race's art i love his work 
just an interesting choice um, involved in, in the artists, the creators involved with these books. So uh, one of the questions, uh, I've already talked about why I wanted to pick up this book. Um, there were some questions on Twitter uh, that I asked about for um, uh, sideways and um, damage. And so I wanted to continue some of those questions here. And uh, one of which is, you know, will this book last? Will will this idea last? Uh, you know, what kind of staying power does it have? And um I think maybe just ever so slightly it has a better chance than than the other two books that I've talked about so far because it is what it is. Um, that are, the choice of characters are interesting. I mean, they're, they're obvious parallels to the Fantastic Four. So um, I don't know. Uh, would this have book would this book have worked better with different characters? And I I, I know I can't I couldn't tell you off the top of my head who those characters would be other than obviously elongated man you know he the guy whose nose twitches when there's a mystery afoot come on <laughs> anyway i'll stop i'll stop with my um my pro elongated man agenda maybe down the road but you know we do have these three existing well established characters um in this New Age of Heroes book, and a character who is basically a clone of an existing character. So, I don't know. Um, obviously, what, what my point with that though is that um, uh, the the three characters, Plastic Man, Mister Terrific, and Metamorpho, they're not going anywhere. They're not going to fade into the background. I mean, more so than they already were. But uh, they'll stick around more than say Damage will potentially. Um, who knows what's going to happen with Phantom Girl? You know, but I, I'm expecting that this version of Phantom Girl will eventually be like damage a footnote in DC's history. However, she could be, she is potentially a a bridge to gap between the 21st century characters and a new Legion of Superheroes book. So I could just, I could just, or I can already envision a future story in this book where these characters travel to the 31st century and encounter the Legion of superheroes and, and the Wazoo family girls are united. And we then from there, it launches into a new Legion book and the world, the universe is a happier place for it. So (laughs) I'm looking forward to that DC within the coming year, right? (laughs) Anyway. Okay. So uh, I've talked long enough about, the Terrifics. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next. Uh, not all that wowed about it just yet, but uh, it has a lot of potential. So with that, I will leave you uh, and implore you if you have any thoughts about The Terrifics number one or about The New Age of Heroes in general, uh, the other books that I've talked about, uh, please let me know. You can email me at longboxreview at gmail.com. You can leave comments at the website longboxreview.com or you can um, uh, tweet at me at long box review on Twitter. And I look forward to hearing from you, uh, about these books and anything else that you would like to talk to me about. I would love that very much. And, uh, with that, uh, thanks for listening and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.